be in there. This all used to be uh, a midden here. Oh yeah? It used to be all family longhouses here. Oh wow. So whether this was a burning yeah. area, but uh, my dad uh, built this boat in here yeah. and moved it out and he goes, well, what am I gonna do with this place? My name is Jody Spro. I come from Musqueam, I'm part Squamish. Well, my mother comes from Squamish, my dad, dad is Musqueam. And my grandparents both the same, and I'm a Salish artist. Oh, that's my cue. Yes. Oh. What if I prefer to stand? <laughs> it's all belly right now, though. <laughs> First started off commercial fishing when I was five years old with my grandfather, would be uh, up in Rivers Inlet, well, up and down the coast, whether it was Namu, Bella Bella, over on the island. From there, I always uh, fish during the season. My father is a uh, carpenter by trade, and we used to do plenty of jobs. Where I went off to uh, school and, and became a Red Seal carpenter. And uh, it wasn't until about uh, the Olympics 2010, where, you know, you start seeing artists and whatnot all showing up and getting all sorts of neat jobs and really seeing my Salish work as I injured myself in uh, 2010. And, and to make ends meet, I you know, started uh, carving. Growing up, all I ever seen was form line design. Not knowing what Salish was, the first time I'd seen anything Salish was back in the uh, Chief and Council room back in 1981, I believe it was, and it was Susan Point's uh, print. Didn't know what you know, the circles and crescents and whatnot didn't make any sense to me other than what form line what I was really accustomed to seeing. I do con contemporary style versus a traditional. There are those that just specialize in a traditional style uh, versus a contemporary. I'm pretty sure they can do the contemporary style. Me, yeah, I telling my story, uh, we see you know, the relics of old replicated over and over and over. Me, I, I, I like to tell everything about me and who was this artist? The uh, westerly wind though, I mean, as a fisherman and a commercial fisherman, we're always faced with these uh, different types of weather. So instead of doing uh, stunted earrings, my wife says, oh, I have some trade beads. Think you can do something with the trade beads on there? I'm like, hmm, how would I hang beads off the uh, the face? And it took me a few days, even though I had the, the faces engraved. Then I went, you know what? I can do the westerly wind and hang a bead off uh, one of the uh, silver strands. As you see, the, uh, the symbols that are on there were just center, everything's all focused and moving out, just like how the wind does and how it howls and how it resonates. And that's what I did with the uh, the design with all the crescents. And it's just uh, resonating with the uh, the sound of the wind. A lot of times when we're fishing in the river, they would uh, shut us down at 10 o'clock and we unload and I'll be out in Steveston and I'd keep my boat in, in North Shore over Mosquito Creek Marina. So I'd have to travel out to the to the light ship. And this is back when uh, we didn't have cell phones, right? And uh, the westerly wind blew up where all you saw was uh, white caps. And the, it was full moon out and all you could see is just a white glow out there on the waves coming in. And uh, yeah, I just get airborne on a 17 foot boat, flying from wave to wave over. And uh, yeah, when I see those earrings and they, when I even talk about the westerly, when uh, it's one of the images I remember. As an artist, to be recognized, it's always important to have your own thumbprint. The big boom, when everything all started, that's when I started, is when I, when I started doing the goat horn. And from the goat horn, yeah, then it went into the weave. And so, 
basically that was the uh, the start of the universe, start of my world actually. When I started doing the goat horn, I was getting really bored with uh, doing the crosshatch design in behind the figures and whatnot, whether they're birds or or uh, animals of some sort. You know, you crosshatch, so your design actually pops out, and yeah, it just gets tiresome. And just like when I uh, used to uh, sign it in the back and actually put down hummingbird in the back and grave, and you start doing 60 pieces like that, and you're like, hmm. And, uh, you know, thanks to uh, doing the goat horn now, I actually put the goat horn and the weave and the crosshatch in behind the design, just like how I did this bracelet. Normally it would just be a figure, right? And now in the background I have the uh, the weave design. And if I were to get even more intricate, then on top I'd do the uh, the goat horn design. But this took a lot of patience. I had a lot of steady hand to do this design. All three of my daughters are natural artists. And my daughter uh, who lives up in uh, Chushwap found out that my wife and I were sick with COVID, that she came down and took care of us for a month. And it was right then and there when my daughter asked, is it okay if I uh, if I look at your work and, and copy some of your, your work? And it kind of broke my heart to hear that because I told my daughter, I said, this is your legacy. Anything you see of mine is yours. And uh, same with my other daughters, the exact same thing, you know. That's when I uh, realized now that uh, how important it is. Just recently, you know, I'd taken on four apprentices now, teaching them how to carve. And, you know, when someone like UBC or whatever I'll ask and to bid on this and bid on that and bid on this, it's all separate artists alone doing it. And they all have separate styles of, uh, you know, whether it's Salish or form line. So I decided to take on apprentices to uh, teach them my style and my way of carving and my techniques. So we all can help each other out as a community and learn from each other. What's next? House posts. I'm already looking at uh, different type of building facades that I can add to a high rise or I can see a high rise with uh, blue glass with design, stained glass design all the way up. Something that represents Salish. But what's next is uh, house posts and poles and spreading the word and, and, and teaching Salish. And it's becoming quite a buzz now, just taking on the one apprentice and the, by the word of the mouth and everybody wants to join and I'm just one artist, but all it does is take one in the pyramid scheme. <laughs>